go right ahead and go over the Olympic game between the United States and South Sudan. So, obviously, no surprise, United States, they ended up beating the South, South Sudan team. This game was never close. Now, I was, you know, I was a little bit scared that it was going to be, it was going to be close, but then I found out that Joel Embiid wasn't starting, and then all my worries just disappeared. <laughs> no, but I'm just kidding. But essentially, yes, Joel Embiid didn't start in this game, and for the first time, Steve Kerr is finally using his head and starting Anthony Davis. I'm pretty sure it was only for this game just because of matchups. South Sudan, they move very, very quickly, and Joel Embiid is rather lazy on defense, and he doesn't move his feet nearly as much as Anthony Davis moves his feet. So putting Joel Embiid out there is almost a defensive liability. Like, you're just asking to get scored on. And combined with the fact that Joel Embiid can't score back, it doesn't really make sense to have him in the lineup. So after Jason Tatum did not play in the previous game, now he's playing in this game, and in response, Joel Embiid is sitting out. Joel Embiid was the only player throughout the entire game that did not play a single minute against South Sudan, which, you know, for being a for being a part of the supposed big three that Steve Kerr called LeBron, Steph, and Joel Embiid, seems a little bit underwhelming. Like I wouldn't have I I knew Joel Embiid shouldn't have been starting, but I didn't expect him to not play a single game. But Aside from that, it doesn't really matter because a win is a win is a win, and the United States beat them 103-86. to Again, the game was never close. It was just a blowout from start to finish, and nothing that really we really needed to worry about going into this game. LeBron James, obviously the best player on the team, the best player in the game as well. 12 points, was 5 for 9 from the field. And didn't hit a three-pointer. I think this is like the first time he missed every single three-pointer. And then he was able to tack on seven rebounds as well as five assists to go along with his 12 points. Now, Bam Adebayo, who is the other center on the United States team, ended up scoring 18 points and was recorded seven rebounds as well as one assist. Now, the one assist is not really that impressive, but what is impressive is is how he went 8 for 10 from the entire field. He shot 80% and once again completely outplayed Joel Embiid who did not play. It seems that every single game there's only been one game where Joel Embiid has outplayed every center on the team and every other time all these other Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo they seem to always outplay him and Anthony, speaking of Anthony Davis, he doesn't show up on this list, but in this game, he went 4 for 7 from the field, recorded 8 points, and also was able to record 7 rebounds. And honestly, like, I mean, these... The big man position is a very, very important position in Olympic basketball. Like, it seems that if you don't have a very good big man in the Olympics, you're just... You're not really going to be able to go anywhere. Like... Even with all the guard play that we have, we still need like that really good center just to keep this game in check, right? I mean, and speaking of pretty bad guard play, Stephen Curry has been awful in these Olympics. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, like, I mean, it could just be a shooting slump because, like, again, it's just like his shots are missing, but it's like Steph Curry missing shots. It's like it's almost unheard of like it's i mean well it's not really almost unheard of but it's like you don't expect somebody like uh, that has that reputation and that type of shooting to just go on these kinds of slumps but it's happening to him right now he was he was one for nine from the field in this previous game and was oh for six from three like he's been really really bad and he hasn't really been a major factor in any of these olympic games at all now, Anthony Edwards, on the other hand, he's been very, very consistent for this team, and was he ended up going 4 for 9 from the field for 13 points, and, I mean, like, you know, that was really, since he's basically only there for scoring, like, you know, that's his main role on the team, it, that's really, like, all that you really need for someone like Anthony, like, from Anthony Edwards. Now, Kevin Durant, same thing applies with him. He scored 14 points, but he only hit two shots, so... The rest of the points came from the free throw line, but it doesn't matter. He gets his points the way that he, it's not like he's, you know, 
feeding for three for free throws like Joel Embiid like Joel Embiid looks for free throws it's not like he's doing that also Derek White 10 three for three from the field 10 points and really since you know that's basically it because he was he also recorded excuse me he also recorded three steals and Kevin Durant he also recorded three steals same with Anthony Edwards that's one of the things that is also you know a very underrated part of the Olympic basketball fast breaks like fast breaks they really if you can get out in transition before a lot of these teams because a lot of these teams they try to go for offensive rebounds so if you can get out in transition that is some easy points for you right there and the steals are like one of the more popular means of like scoring with the United States I remember watching the redeem team all the way back in 2012 when the like they would get steal after steal after steal and they would get stop after stop after stop and it's like every single time they would run the break and they would destroy whichever team would that was running the break now for south sudan Carlick jones had another outstanding performance he was he recorded 18 points but you know i'm not really going to show him here because he lost in this game so obviously you know i don't really like showing the losers on this re on this skit on on this thing right here or on this graph right here that's what i meant to say excuse me unless it's like you know a very outstanding and dominant performance coming in from the loser you know and bull cool another player for south sudan ended the game with 16 points six for 10 from the field and nuni omat ended the game eight for 12 and recorded um, 27 minutes along with 24 points he was also three for five from three, which is just, you know, very, very impressive for this South Sudan team and everything else. So now with this win, the United States now is all the way up in the one seed of this, you know, standings. There's no need to really, how should I say, for the United, there's no need for the United States to worry about anything anymore because like, you know, this win puts them in a into like a huge advantage going into these next going into these knockout rounds i guess you could say because the point differential that they have is so much larger than the rest of the other teams in the point differential that they could afford to lose the next game and they would still be fine they're not going to lose the next game because it's to puerto rico but they would be fine anyway because of their point differential being so high and I'm, I'll explain a little bit, I'll dive a little bit deeper into that, you know, in the fourth segment when I actually look at the standings and just exactly like what team is in position to do what and which team is in position to like, you know, be able to compete, which teams get eliminated, which teams are not going to get eliminated, all of that stuff that you need to know. And again, like, you know, a couple of takeaways from this game. I feel like Jason Tatum is another player that's sort of been struggling. I mean, in the beginning of the of the matchups with USA, I thought he was going to be an X factor. Same with, you know, Joel Embiid. I thought both of those guys would be X factors for this team, but it turns out they've sort of been well, Joel Embiid has been mainly a liability throughout a majority of this of this Olympic run, and Jason Tatum, he's sort of been He's sort of been, like, I don't really know how to say it, but he hasn't really been all there. And he only recorded 17 minutes despite being in the starting lineup. Again, I don't understand how long it's going to take until Steve Kerr realizes that he has to play Kevin Durant. I mean, Kevin Durant, we want to talk about him not receiving starter minutes. He played 21 minutes. That's almost more than anyone else on the team aside from Devin Booker. And it's like... Steve Kerr, he really, another takeaway is that Steve Kerr really likes starting guards. Like, he really likes putting guards in the starting lineup for no reason. And I don't under, this happens also, like, with, um, with his time on the Warriors. Like, Gary Payton, the second, he's supposed to be a shooting guard, but he plays, like, the four under Steve Kerr's lineups. And it's like, what on earth is, like, going through your head? It doesn't make any sense to me. And, that's another takeaway that I got after this game. Like, I thought it was just, you know, because they had too many guards. But the reality is that, you know, he just loves playing these guards. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. It genuinely does not make any sense. Because, like, why can't you put Jason Tatum and Kevin Durant in the starting lineup and be happy with that? I don't, I don't see why you cannot do that. I would be totally fine with that. I don't see a single problem with any of those, 
you know, players in the in the starting lineup, especially like you know to pair Kevin Durant up with Steph, like doesn't make any sense. And if you're if you're not going to put, you know, a if you don't want to put those two in the same starting lineup because you know they have a score, they both need to have the ball in their hands and to score. Then just come, then just make him come off with the second unit a little bit more. And but the fact that he didn't play him in the previous game is just you know it's a little bit concerning because it's like is he gonna just take turns sitting out every single star? I don't really like that. I feel like you know you can develop a pretty decent rotation for all of these guys. But aside from that, that's all that I have for this recap. So now we will go ahead and go into the second segment where I talk about Gordon Hayward and his retirement. And I will, you know, I'll be right back after this short break to talk about it. So be sure you stay tuned for all of that. And I'll be right back. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? to be the greatest everybody on the face shit i look around and feel like everybody is the fakest i make this every day and i'm impatient hoping one day i blow up from the basement statement the top is so vacant i don't need shit that i think is amazing waiting for my day when i'm playing sold out shows for a thousand faces hey give me that crown get in my way and you'll be put down it ain't your place all this my town if i want that shit then i'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose, if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift, oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind, is everybody in the world blind, please Lord give me a sign, a sign, I feel like I'm losing my mind, is everybody in the 